A mountain is part of the Earth's surface that rises to more than 510 meters above sea level. Mountains may occur as single isolated masses or as ranges alongside one another. Because of a mountain's height and natural challenges, plants and animals also face a few more challenges to survive than they would on flatter, lower terrain. In this range of mountains called the Drakensberg, named from the Bushmen's belief that it was the hunting grounds of dragons, live a subspecies of baboon. The Drakensberg baboons have adapted well to the high life. Their natural climbing skills coupled with their ability at scavenging for food make them the perfect inhabitants of this mountain terrain. Unlike their human cousins, these primate mothers feel quite safe letting the little one wander close to the edge. Baboon babies are born with a natural climbing ability that allows them to clamber around and feel totally at home in this environment. Using the alpine grasses as anchor ropes, the youngsters play on the steep mountain slopes, hardly noticing the gradient. Some are a bit more sure-footed than others. Due to the unyielding nature of the terrain, the offspring require far more time to become independent of the adults than other baboons. There are so many more tricks of the trade to be learned where the juiciest roots are to be found, which of them can be eaten and which not. One of the main reasons for their success in this harsh environment is the social dynamic at work within the troop, particularly when it is under threat. The Drakensberg baboons also have relatively small troop sizes. They are also seasonal breeders, coinciding with the availability of food. Thus, babies are born within a short time of one another. Grooming is to a baboon what sharing a pot of tea is to a human, a ritual that enforces social bonds and an important part of baboon relationships. It is also very useful in keeping each other clean. One of the disadvantages of living at altitude is the weather, and the higher you are, the colder and more chance of freezing weather. This black eagle and her chick have been caught short, and the sudden cold spell could mean certain death. Her second egg has not yet hatched. Her priority is to keep the first chick alive. Now she ensures the little one is tucked well under her thick warm feathers called a brood patch. The other problem is food, but hopefully her mate will take care of that. These mountain dussies could well be called food for a black eagle. But having lived in close proximity to these airborne mountain predators, they are always cautious and extremely sure-footed when they need to be. Much further north, in the mountains overlooking the Negev Desert, lives the wild desert version of the mountain goat, the horned ibex. Patrolling their stronghold of the steep desert cliffs, ibexes are fitted with flexible hooves, allowing them to climb the rocks and jump the yawning abyss. Where the Otaniqua Mountains meet the Karoo in the Cape Province of South Africa lives the closest relative to the extinct Quacha, the Cape Mountain Zebra. The Quacha ceased to be in 1883, and the Mountain Zebra came close to following the same route when it was discovered that in 1945 only seven stallions and six mares were left. Today, after a rigorous breeding program, there are 750 mountain zebras, and hopefully the mountains that once protected them will again ensure their survival.